Today I'm going to be looking at the official viability rankings for Gen 3 OU. This is an aggregate ranking based on the individual lists of many top players and relevant community members. This gets updated about every six months or so, and the recent update was in February, early February. So I'm going to take a look at what the best players in the game believe to be representative of the current Gen 3 OU landscape. I agree with many of these placements, I also disagree with many of them. First up we have Tyranitar, I've talked about Tyranitar a million times, we all know why it's number one, it creates permanent sand on the field, incredibly high impact ability, metagame defining, and it's incredibly powerful and versatile on its own merits too, with Dragon Dance Sweeper set being probably the most popular win condition in the format. Insane set variety, special sets, mix sets, utility sets, everything. Number two is Skarmory, and I think most players would firmly agree with this one as well. Skarmory is pretty much as central to Gen 3 OU as Tyranitar is. The Steel Flying type combination is just excellent with no physical weaknesses whatsoever, and immunity to Spikes, immunity to Dugtria Arena Trap, immunity to Sandstorm. It's even immune to Toxic. This guy just evades everything important. It has the bulk of a champion. Chip heal on Skarmory is insane. It can chip heal up to like 100% plus in some battles. Skarmory is the Pokemon to beat in Gen 3. Every single team needs some sort of game plan against it, whether you're beating it down over a longer period of time, directly trapping it with Magneton, luring it in some way with Choice Band Metagross. There's no doubt that Skarmory is excellent. Some even consider it the number one Pokemon. That's a fringe belief, but it's valid in its own right. Number three is Metagross. This is the most popular choice for number three Pokemon in Gen 3 OU, but there are some other contenders for it. I personally think Zapdos is the number three Pokemon, but we can talk about that in a moment. Metagross is insanely powerful, and the amount of value it provides to your team in a single slot is almost unmatched in this metagame. Metagross not only improves your matchup against important enemies like Tyranitar, Aerodactyl, Snorlax, it's also an offensive powerhouse. You can actually actually EV it specifically to be an offensive win condition with the popular agility Metagross set. Metagross is also the best choice band user in the format. Clear body makes you immune to intimidate, maintaining your enormous attack stat. Explosion with a choice band has the power to eliminate Skarmory, which is absurdly useful. And Meteor Mash is a gross move, no pun intended. Meteor Mash with its attack raise chance and a large 100 base power can defy logic sometimes. Choice Band Metagross with Meteor Mash attack raise is just insane. It can even power through Skarmory or Swamp It, which are supposed to be solid checks thanks to that attack raise. It also has an enormous amount of set variety. You can run mixed Metagross with many different uh, movesets, Psychic, HP Fire, HP Grass, Thunder Punch, options like that. There's Indoor Salak Metagross sets, so you can go like toxic, full defense Metagross, completely bulky variant. And the powerful explosion of Metagross, no matter what set you're running, is always just so useful to have as a last-ditch option to trade with enemies. The value Metagross provides is just unmatched. That concludes the S tier. Now moving on to the A tier, Swamp It at the top. Swamp It is the premier physical defensive Pokemon in the format. Swamp It consistently appears in like the top three of usage stats just because it's so useful to have. It helps your matchups against Tyranitar, Metagross, Aerodactyl, Salamence, it pressures Blissey, it can help against Jirachi sets depending on their coverage. Swamp It has so many utility and tech options to improve in further matchups like Counter, Roar, Refresh for status soaking. Even Curse can help you out versus like a resting Suicune and give you an extra win condition. Gen 3 Swamp It is just an absolute delight. This is a beautiful Pokemon in every regard. It's so customizable. It's so reasonable to answer as well. It's limited in its healing. You can chip it down in very natural ways, but the amount of value it provides to teams causes it to just consistently be high usage. And we all love Swamp It, folks. What a beautiful, balanced, excellent Pokemon all around. At number five is Zapdos, and I personally have a lot more respect for Zapdos than some. It's not that uncommon of an opinion to put Zapdos in the S rank, but I believe Zapdos is the best special attacker in Gen 3 OU. Probably the best offensive Pokemon in Gen 3 OU period. Electric flying typing is just excellent, completely nullify that ground weakness, you fly above the spikes. Zapdos is very naturally bulky, its special attack is enormous, its speed tier is just right, at base 100, 
Access to Baton Pass is excellent, providing Zapdos with an inherent way to punish its switch-ins by simply pivoting. You can also pass on advantageous effects like Substitute and Agility, or maintain a Calm Mind Pass chain. Celebi Calm Mind Pass to Zapdos, pass that on further. Baton Pass is just excellent. And having pivoting on a Pokemon that is immune to spikes is also great. Not many Pokemon have that in Gen 3, certainly not any that are as powerful as Zapdos is. Think of like an offensive pivot with heavy duty boots in Gen 9. Boots just allow you to repeatedly come in and pivot and just maintain momentum without getting chipped down by hazards. Zapdos can do something similar, a bit more reasonable than that, but something similar. Thunder Wave is a great option on Zapdos that can cripple important targets. Roar is fantastic against those pesky ninjasks, miscellaneous uh, boost sweepers, a Carmine chain, Swords Dance Celebi. Suicune boosting up. Roar is always nice to have and it helps you apply pressure to Blissey too, stacking up Spikes Chip as they switch in, forcing them out. And there's a lot of customization you can do on Zapdos too. You can mess with the EVs a lot, certain speed benchmarks are important. You can go Rest Zapdos, which has a lot of moveset variety. You can go Sleep Talk on Rest Zapdos for the fast roar. Sleep Talk Zapdos is quite underrated because there's two out of three good uh, Sleep Talk outcomes in Thunderbolt and Roar, which can help you stack up Spikes Chip. It's really good on Superman teams to run a set like that. You can just forego Roar for like Toxic or HP Grass or HP Ice, whatever you need. Some even go Drill Pack to help versus fighting type. Speaking of Drill Pack, Mixed Zapdos is another awesome set that can help you pressure Celebi, your most, one of your most common switch-ins, and also do decent damage to Blissey more than your special attacks could do. Also covers fighting types like Breloom, Hariyama, Heracross. HP Fighting Zapdos is a cool one too to hit Tyranitar and Blissey harder. I love Zapdos and I think it is kind of the go-to offensive Pokemon for almost every archetype. Zapdos can fit on anything. It even fits on physical offense, even though it's a special attacker because of the just the high value of Baton Pass. Agility Pass can also be used on those teams. I think very highly of Zapdos. Up next is Gengar, Gen 3 or use most versatile Pokemon in my opinion. Gengar's immunity to normal type attacks, rapid spin explosion, fighting type attacks, poison, levitate granting it immunity to ground type moves, spikes, and Dugtrue's Arena Trap. All of those traits are amazing. On top of all of that, it has fantastic stats. It's got a 350 max speed, which outruns the base 100s like Zapdos, Salamence, and it has coverage to handle all of them. It has fantastic special attack and decent enough natural bulk to get good use out of its fantastic defensive. Gengar's move pool is vast, the amount of coverage, the amount of utility is just ridiculous. Yet another Pokemon that can squeeze its way onto almost any team style. Gengar usually emblematic of Spike's teams though because of its ability to spin block, but even on spikeless teams you can use this guy with all of its incredible advantages. Something like a mean look Perisong set can be an alternative way to lure in and trap Blissey. Explosion also does the same, Explosion into Dug Trio combo. Beautiful Pokemon. I'll make a dedicated video about Gengar one day. That'll be a long one. Stay tuned for that. As for the placement, I think it's about right. You can't really argue with this. It's the sixth best here. I would put it a bit lower personally. I think that some Pokemon below it are easy to fit on more teams, but I can't argue with this too much. After that is Salamence at number seven. And personally, I would put Salamence above Gengar. Salamence is probably the second best offensive Pokemon in the game behind Zapdos. Salamence is the premier mixed attacker in Gen 3 OU. It has great special attack and physical attack, high speed and amazing move pull with options like Fire Blast, Stab Dragon Claw for great neutral damage, Brick Break, which threatens Tyranitar and Blissey. Yet another flying type, meaning it is immune to spikes and ground type attacks and Dugtro's arena trap. Such a good quality to have it in Gen 3. Dragon flying is a fantastic defensive typing with a lot of great resistances, giving you entry points, which is important. And at Intimidate is just such an excellent ability. So great. Lowering the enemy's attack always comes in handy. It can save you in endgame situations with repeated Intimidates and like those mind games where you can come in on Earthquake multiple times, pivot out. Salamence can save your life just by switching in, in weaseling its way onto the field. And that's only its mixed set I'm talking about. What about the physical sets? Dragon Dance Salamence, one of the most powerful win conditions in Gen 3. Requires a bit of support because it can't quite sweep instantly upon Dragon Dancing. Swampert just cleanly comes in and checks it. Bulky Gengar sets can do the same. Skarmory, of course. So you need Magneton with it usually, or some game plan to pressure Skarmory. Otherwise, like maybe a Focus Punch to Renatar to beat it down. But if you can set up for the Dragon Dance Salamence win condition, it is 
a fantastic way to secure a game. Once you've chipped everything, brought Swamp at low, or just eliminated it entirely, there's other checks too. Blissey can live, plus one hidden power flying and KO you back. Melodic and Suicune, of course, can handle you defensive Starmie. There's many checks to Dragon and Salamence, but that's what I like about it too. It's not like an automatic victory. I think in later gens it becomes insane what boost sweepers can do. They just need one turn to win instantly. Dragon and Salamence has a lot of roadblocks. It doesn't quite win in one second, but an amazing win condition to set up for. One of the best Pokemon on Magneton offense teams. And Choice Band Salamence, I've also been warming up to quite a bit. It has the shortcoming of being vulnerable to sand because it's not sand immune. It gets chipped by sandstorm, but very few Pokemon have explosive wall breaking power of Choice Band Salamence. It's an amazing breaker. I think it's a very good lead too, and Salamence has a lot of moveset customization at its disposal too, with options like Refresh and Roar that you can slot in, or the Wish Protect sets are also fantastic, the defensive Salamence sets. I don't know how you can not love Salamence, this is a perfect Pokemon in every way. It is so reasonable, balanced, but also just awesome, fun to use, fun for everyone involved, and it's a cool dragon. Everybody likes Salamence, it's just excellent. A central Pokemon in Gen 3, and... Who, what better central Pokemon could you ask for? At number 8 on this one is Blissey, who I would put above both Gengar and Salivance. I think Blissey is tremendous. I also think Blissey is the most overhated Pokemon in Gen 3 OU, or maybe of all time. A lot of people dislike Blissey, they think it's lame, they don't like how defensive it is, but I think Blissey doesn't get enough credit, specifically in Gen 3, for how variable it is and how much of a positive impact it has for this metagame, how it holds things together. Blissey is the best special wall in the format with its normal typing and enormous HP and special defense stats. It is completely safe against the vast majority of special attacks. Natural Cure is also a fantastic ability that heals status on switch out, meaning Blissey is kind of the go-to Pokemon to soak status because it's status is only temporary on Blissey, you can heal it very easily. Blissey has a million different utility and status moves, it can immediately heal with soft boiled. It's got Thunder Wave and Toxic, which are very high impact. It has stuff like Wish and Aromatherapy for support. But I think what's most awesome about Blissey in Gen 3 OU is that the vast majority of Blissey sets actually run special attack investment and some sort of special coverage. Most common one is Ice Beam because it saves you from being trapped by Dugtrio with special attack and super effective Ice Beam damage. You can KO the standard Dugtrio set. Ice Beam also allows you to check Salamence because you, with defense investment, you live plus one HP flying and it can just KO them with Ice Beam. But you can also run more special coverage and sometimes Blissey feels like an offensive threat in this generation. You can run Thunderbolt, which pressures Skarmory, hits Suicune quite hard, hits Melodic quite hard, Starmie, especially defensive Starmie sets, it's great against those. I love Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Blissey. Fantastic set. Flamethrower, also an awesome option on Blissey that can help you hit not only Skarmory, but Foratress for big damage. Metagross commonly comes in on Blissey, you can hit them with a random Flamethrower. Some players even do Fire Blast for its higher power, which can sometimes even two-hit KO Skarmory. And Blissey has a lot of moveset variety, you can go Calm Mind Blissey, use it as a win condition, you can go Counter Blissey and catch a Metagross or Snorlax or something off guard with a surprise KO. And I think the process of pressuring Blissey over the course of a game is really fun. You can like roar it as it comes in, chip it down with spikes and sand, or hit it with a Salamence Brick Break by surprise. Everybody is out to get Blissey. It's got the biggest target on its back of all time, and it does have some shortcomings. It doesn't have any phasing options, so it can be set up fodder for Pokemon like Suicune, Jirachi, and Celebi. It gets destroyed by Leech Seed, speaking of Celebi. A simple Toxic will apply a lot of pressure to Blissey and force it out. I really like the gameplay surrounding Blissey, I love building with it because of how customizable it can be. If you compare Blissey to other central defensive Pokemon from future metagames, I think Blissey is more than reasonable, there's more than enough options to actually pressure it, it can't quite uh, defy all logic whatsoever and just live forever. It, there's not like Regenerate or Magic Guard or anything crazy like that, it has weaknesses. It has exploitable weaknesses. Up next at number 9 is Jirachi, and this placement is about right. It is a very powerful central Pokemon you see very frequently, but I would also still put it below everything above it on this particular list. Jirachi is very versatile. It has 100 base stats across the board, meaning it is kind of a 
clay to be molded in whatever direction you want. You can go with Carmine sweeper sets, which have many different ways they can be evil and built with. There's the substitute Carmine sets that run 101 health substitutes to 1v1 Blissey. The amount of different coverage options you can do with the elemental punches, psychic stab, thunderbolts is vast. So that's always a decision. There's no auto include Jirachi set. It is always team dependent. Sometimes you go just full special attack, full speed, Calm Mind three attacks, the Super Rachi. Sometimes you go Calm Mind Wish Jirachi. And there's also defensive Jirachi sets like Wish Protect Jirachi, which is one of the few Wish support Pokemon immune to sand, which is very valuable. Helps out versus Aerodactyl too. You can go Bold Jirachi with defense or special defense. Obviously, because it has 100 base stats, you can mold it to whatever you want. There's even mixed Jirachi sets which have been rising recently. I think they're actually excellent. Great lead because you can threaten a lot of stuff at once. And Jirachi is one of those Pokemon that has a lot of bluffing potential because you could have so many possible coverage options. The enemy has to respect them. But even if you don't have HP Grass, for example, they still can't stay with their Swampert at risk of potentially losing it. So you can use that to your advantage a lot with Jirachi. Hidden information is a king. And Serene Grace is obviously amazing too. Body Slam has a 60% para chance. That's one of Jirachi's best tools. You can actually paralyze ground types with that. Uh, Ice Punch and Fire Punch have 20% proc chances, which is a point of frustration actually for many, especially that freeze chance. That's where Jirachi can get quite annoying. That's the worst part of Jirachi. I like everything else about the Pokemon. I love its moveset variety and how malleable it is. The Serene Grace stuff can be annoying but cool Pokemon overall, good addition to the metagame. Feels pretty reasonable to handle most of the time. Sometimes the Jirachi information game can be a bit of a hellscape where you are trying to figure out what the hell its moveset is, but you can't quite and you just get caught off guard. But I feel like there's apt tools to scout its sets to and I like it overall. And number 10, we have Celebi. And personally, I would actually put Celebi above Jirachi. I think Celebi is very good. Celebi, similar to Jirachi, is one of the, what do they call it, mythicals with 100 base stats across the board. It has Natural Cure, amazing ability that cures status on switch out, exactly like Blissey. And it uh, fits on more teams than Jirachi does. It has Baton Pass and Calm Mind and Swords Dance, amazing tools to pass on stats to teammates. It is kind of the premier stat passer in the format. Its typing gives it way more utility than Jirachi, in my opinion. I think Celebi is the go-to alternative special wall to Blissey. Just because of its typing, it helps out versus a million things like Zapdos and Suicune. Blissey as well, because of Natural Cure, you're not worried about status. You have Recover, which Jirachi likes. Recover is amazing. Leech Seed is kind of the star of the show on Celebi. Amazing move that just is one of the freest clicks you can use. Always good, pretty much. And I love Celebi's moveset variety too. I love the... You can go like Carmine Leech Seed, non-Baton Pass. You can go Carmine Baton Pass with a lot of different coverage options like Psychic, Giga Fragrant, HP Fire, HP Ice. Swords Dance sets have a lot of cool options because you can run physical coverage on them if you want, like HP Fighting to one-hit Tar, Pressure Blissey, HP Bug to hit enemy Celebi, and like stuff like Claydol Stami, Shadow Ball to hit Gengar, Stami, Celebi, stuff like that. Ancient Power is another cool one because Moltres and Charizard commonly come in against you, so you can run Swords Dance and Ancient Power to get the jump on them while also supporting your teammates. I love what this provides to Magneton offense teams because it uh, helps so much in the Swampert matchup. If Swampert is so always like a cornerstone of the metagame, then Celebi is by proxy gonna be just as important. It's like the best Swampert answer in the entire game. Directly threatening it and resisting both water and ground. They can ice beam you, but it's non-stab. You can shrug it off with your great natural bulk. Celebi, incredibly versatile, a lot easier to fit on teams than Jirachi, but does get pressured a bit by Spikes and Sand, suffers a bit from four move slot syndrome and can struggle to fit on absolutely any team archetype. It could fit on almost anything, but not quite as self-sufficient as stuff like Salamence Gengar Zapdos in my opinion, but still fantastic Pokemon. That concludes the A rank onto the B rank and topping out the B rank is Suicune. This is an interesting one. There is a case to be made that Suicune is superior to both Jirachi and Celebi. You could definitely argue that, and that's a point of contention, I'm sure. I don't take that much issue with this placement, but Suicune is a 
amazing Pokemon. Suicune is one of the best win conditions in the format. It is the staple of defensive teams, pressure and calm mind and rest. Mono water typing ticks a lot of important defensive boxes and at the same time, pressure gives you that incredible longevity. Almost nothing can 1v1 Suicune long term because of pressure, not even Blissey. Calm mind also lets you force the issue and break through teams. This thing has moveset variety too. It's not just a defensive Pokemon. You can run offensive sets with sub calm mind rather than rest calm mind to pressure Blissey and try to just win quickly with a Suicune. You can go calm mind three attacks on Suicune. Speedier variants with hydro pump for big damage. That can even pressure like Snorlax significantly. Crocoon sets are also amazing. They can snowball like nothing else. It's interesting how things come full circle. I remember back in the day, I thought Suicune was the number one Pokemon in Gen 3 OU. That was my opinion. I don't know if that was a commonly held opinion, but Suicune was definitely like top tier back then. Then I think Suicune respect died down a bit later on and as the game became more modernized. Now I think it's coming back up. I feel like you see Suicune all the time in high level games and it has such a high win rate. It's one of the most consistent Pokemon. But not as self-sufficient as something like Zapdos, you know, requires a bit more support. It is passive and punishable. It is a bit one-dimensional too. It has moveset variety, but not as much as the, the Pokemon above it. And it can't quite fit on absolutely every team style. But it is still one of the most powerful win conditions and scariest Pokemon. And number 12, we've got Aerodactyl, who I might even put above Jirachi Celebi and Suicune if it was me. I have a lot of respect for Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is like the choice scarfer of Gen 3 OU with its enormous speed tier outrunning almost everything. It has the benefit of sand and spike immunity. It is kind of like a form of speed control and offensive pressure that you can't quite match. It is the cornerstone of many aggressive strategies. It is an offensive momentum generator. And Aerodactyl is one of the few Pokemon that can allow you to defy the conventional rules of Gen 3 OU. Aerodactyl can make up for your defensive backbone with offense. You can just forego something like Bliss, you have just no special check at all. Be happy to sacrifice a Pokemon because every time you get Aerodactyl in safely, you're recovering momentum, recovering value. The ability for this guy to outrun stuff like a plus one Dragon Dance Tyranitar, plus one Dragon Dance Gyarados is very valuable. My opinion of Substitute Lychee Berry Aerodactyl has also risen over time. I think that set is actually really fantastic, especially on hyper offense teams that will only bring Aero in like once and kind of go all in and explode and stuff. Substitute Lychee Berry Aerodactyl is one of the best cleaners in the game. You basically sub down to your berry, get that attack boost, and but this time you can switch moves. You could Rock Slide, Earthquake, Double Edge, almost perfect coverage. You can even run HP Flying if you prefer for stab flying damage. Amazing set and it's also really great on swords dance past celebi teams what better swords dance receiver than something faster than everything with near perfect coverage i can't think of much better than that claydol at number 13 here i would also disagree with this one i think claydol is probably deserving of a rank and i would even put it above to be honest jirachi celebi suicune and aerodactyl i would put claydol all the way up here claydol is the best rapid spinner in the format it is an amazing defensive pokemon as well it's immune to spikes sand ground type moves rapid spin and explosion are just endlessly useful utility even if you're not up against a spike matchup claydol will soft check something and explode on it if it has to it helps you out in so many matchups helps out versus tyranitar metagross a little bit you can't quite come in but you can threaten it with earthquake helps out versus zapdos helps out versus aerodactyl miscellaneous stuff like liver stami surf explode on it there's always you can just squeeze in that extra value from claydol it is so uh versatile in how you can use it from game to game because of its access to explosion i love that about it in some games you want claydol to stick around forever and just operate as a rapid spinner in some games claydol is your check to Zapdos. In some games, Claydol is just exists to trade with a bulky water type like Suicune or Stami. The versatility of how you can actually use Claydol in game, it has decent moveset variety too with options like Shadow Ball, Rock Slide, Refresh, Rest even. Claydol is amazing and I think it deserves to be a bit higher. Number 14 is Dugtrio, who... Man, I disagree with a lot of this list, don't I? Because I also think Dugtrio should be higher than this. Dugtrio is a trapper, of course, with Arena Trap and Choice Band. Dugtrio is actually banned in most later generations. In Gen 3, it's not because it has a lower attack stat than in later gens. It also lacks options like Focus Sash and Sucker Punch that made it a bit more difficult to deal with. But in Gen 3, it's pretty much... Uh, 
exclusively running Choice Band, which makes it more punishable. Every time you eliminate something with Doug, you will basically be giving up some momentum, allowing a free Skarm or Salamence to hit the fields. But regardless, the ability to actually reliably trap and eliminate specific enemies is one of the most pivotal game plan enablers there is. Doug Trio is not only a central Pokemon you always have to worry about, it is a metagame defining Pokemon that archetypes are born because of what Doug Trio can do. Doug Trio is a cornerstone of many defensive strategies because of its ability to eliminate uh, Tyranitar, Metagross, Jirachi, fighting types like Heracross and Breloom. You have a game plan against those wall breakers and it can be used in different ways matchup to matchup of course as well it is one of the most popular alternative game plans against tyranitar instead of running a swampert you can run a dug trio and then something like a cladal or murdergross or even a suicune bulky dug trio sets are also the central idea behind special offense teams with their ability to live ice beam from blissey and to it ko it with either adamant earthquake or beat up I think Dugtrio is epic as well. Love playing with this Pokemon. It does restrict things a bit. It punishes a lot of the uh, more niche picks, but they have ways to play around it too. There's a lot of ways to put Dugtrio punishes on your team. Like you just run Skarm or Salamence or even Porygon 2 if you want to go further with it, which is births a whole archetype of its own to counter Dugtrio, which I think is cool. Like uh, metagame evolution and uh, like the double switch in to Doug Trio can be awesome. You can trap Magneton, come in on Blissey in some epic situation, or come in against a low health Metagross that you've been chipping down. It's just awesome what Doug Trio can enable and the the cool reads you can make with it. I think it enhances the format greatly, helps it stand out because Doug Trio is banned in most formats. This is a rare uh, situation where a trapper like Doug Trio is legal and manageable and is a part of the metagame, which I think is cool. At number 15, we have Starmie. I would probably agree with a placement somewhere around here. Maybe be a bit lower than this in fact. Starmie obviously has a lot of fantastic traits. It's got a great special attack stat. It has a great speed stat. It actually outruns Gengar which is very notable. Doesn't quite outrun Aerodactyl or Jolteon, the top dogs of speed, but it is in a fantastic speed tier, outrunning a lot of important stuff. It's offensive coverage is amazing. It has Stab Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, and Thunderbolt. And it of course has Rapid Spin, a coveted option that can remove hazards. Starmie, quite versatile. You can go offensive sets or defensive sets with different mix and matchable options. Uh, it's typing is also great. Water Psychic. Water typing always good. It can actually be a check to stuff like Salamence and Moltres, Charizard, fellows like that. Starmie has a lot going for it. Even Natural Cure is an amazing ability, giving you some status counterplay. However, I feel like Starmie has some shortcomings. Compared to Claydol, it's punishable as a rapid spinner. The defensive Starmie sets can get chipped down, worn down, defeated by spin blockers. Starmie as a rapid spinner can feel more flimsy than Claydol because every rapid spin attempt will cost you a bit of health from spikes and sand, whereas Claydol doesn't have that problem as much. It can maintain its health because of its immunity to those residual damage sources. Uh, and offensive Starmie sets are prone to getting chipped down too. I never really liked the big five Starmie teams, even though that's one of the most classic teams Gen 3 OU has ever seen and has results that speak for itself. I feel like well, the problem with Starmie is that it can't really handle Blissey very well. Blissey just destroys you. I think on Spike's teams, you want some sort of special threat that has options for Blissey. I like Zapdos for that reason, because you can roar Blissey or uh, Baton Pass against it to pivot out or Toxic Protect stall Blissey or stuff like that. You're also immune to Spikes with Zapdos, meaning you're not getting chipped down as much over the course of the game and you can maintain your health a bit more. Starmie feels more limited. It has less longevity and it's more easily stopped in its tracks as a sweeper, which I don't uh, love. But of course, that's only my opinion, my preference, a lot of great players, better than myself have had incredible success with Starmie. Magneton is next. This is an interesting one. I think Magneton deserves to be a bit higher than this because Magneton, even though it seems one dimensional, it's only good because it can trap Skarmory. So besides that, it's not that good, right? I kind of disagree with that sentiment. Magneton is seen in tournaments constantly its role as a trapper against Skarmory is fantastic in terms of what it can enable for team building. You can build a whole strategy around eliminating Skarmory. Physical offense or Skarm mag teams that just try to eliminate Skarmory to simplify the hazard war for themselves. Those Magneton Claydol teams that do a similar thing. 
Skarmory is ubiquitous, it's one of the most common Pokemon in the game, so the ability to trap and eliminate it is often very worth running. And even if you don't face a Skarmory team, you'll find something to get out of Magneton. It still has like 130 special attack with Magnet, so you can outrun and pressure like defensive Suicunes, you can be a soft check to Zapdos and Jolteon, you have uh, status moves, Thunder Wave and Toxic, Protect and Steel Typing helps you out a little bit versus Aero, you can pivot in on Rock Slides and Double Edges sometimes, or Protect to scout what they lock into. You can squeeze a little value out of Magneton, Trap, Choice Band, Metagross, maybe you're running it alongside Celebi, so you run it with Substitute and you subseed like a Jirachi or a random other miscellaneous steel type. Magneton is also surprisingly effective at like pressuring Blissey because you can Toxic it, Protect Stall and just Thunderbolt repeatedly and then a Magneton Thunderbolt is difficult to switch in against. You can run HP Fire for Foratress or HP Grass for Swampit which is very valuable to be able to eliminate and pressure swamp it. I feel like this is a bit low for Magneton, considering how often you see it, considering how much it enables, and how it can be a bit underrated too in terms of what it can accomplish outside of Skarmory matchups. I think it can be sometimes a bit underappreciated. Up next is Snorlax at number 17. I think this placement is probably about right. Snorlax is simultaneously amazing and terrible. It is very weak against a lot of the most central ideas in the format. It's very bad against Skarmory. It gets very punished by Sandstorm and Spikes, but with the appropriate support, often in the form of like Magneton to eliminate Skarmory, Pursuit Tar to eliminate Gengar, Claydol to Rapid Spin. It is a really amazing win condition in many teams, and it is also an anti-meta punisher, because if you're not running Skarm, Spikes, Tar, you kind of get eaten alive by Snorlax, because it will just chip hill a million times with leftovers curse up beyond the point of return you can't defeat the guy it'll just tear you apart i think snorlax is incredibly awesome and i love the power level it's at in this gen it was infamous in gen 2 for how powerful and central it was there and in gen 2 snorlax can feel a bit suffocating sometimes with how it just out heals everything it has that insane natural bulk so i think having spikes and sand in gen 3 helps to keep snorlax at bay like there's a monster there with all of its moveset variety and it's just in monstrous stats everything it can do it's good that there's things it, keeping it at bay because if snorlax was at its full power we would all suffer as a result but Snorlax is still, even with all those shortcomings, it's still Snorlax. It has so much uh, fantastic options. Self-destruct with Stab is amazing. It's kind of the crux of many more aggressive Snorlax sets on Magneton offense teams. It can be a special wall that actually has some offensive firepower and can spread. Paralysis with Body Slam, get amazing reads with Focus Punch, catch a tar coming in or punch like a Metagross for big neutral damage. There's a lot of mixing and matching you can do in terms of its move pull. Curse Rest, Body Slam, Earthquake, if you have Suit Tar support, is an amazing win condition. You can also Shadow Ball instead. Sleep Talk, Mono Lax, that's a set that you see sometimes. Uh, kind of hard to use that one, but you can build around that. And sometimes just the four attack sets with Explosion are also fantastic, and you can mix and match between Focus Punch, Shadow Ball, even occasionally HP Bug is used to hit Celebi. Curse Self-Destruct is a set that can actually be an alternative option to lure in Skarmory because after you curse up with that plus one boost self-destruct will KO Skarmory similar to choice band Metagross. Fringe options like Counter and Yawn are also cool on Snorlax. And at number 18 we have Moltres. I really like Moltres. It's competing with Zapdos a lot. It's similar you know a powerful flying type special attacker but Moltres has its unique advantages. What's great about Moltres is how good it is against Metagross. You can come in on Meteor Mash and threaten to one-hit KO them. Another great advantage to Moltres is its access to Will-O-Wisp, one of the best status moves in the game. Not many Pokemon get Will-O-Wisp, so one of the few special attackers that can actually uh, completely cripple Snorlax and hold its own against it. Moltres commonly uses Roar to punish Blissey switch-ins. Moltres also has access to Overheat, one of the few high power moves in Gen 3 OU. There's not many high base power moves like that. Stab Overheat can be really useful to finish off a low health Blissey that's been worn down over the course of the game by Spikes and Sand. Squeeze in that extra bit of damage. It's also a great thing to click on random resists because it'll just do so much damage with its high base power. 
But Moltres can't quite fit on every team like Zapdos can. Moltres does not have options like Baton Pass. It's not quite as fast as Zapdos is. It uh, is limited basically to the role of a special attacker and wall breaker on Spikes teams and yet another flying type to chuck on your Superman team and improve your Metagross matchup. That's basically where Moltres fits and it does its job very well there, but it's not quite as versatile as the Pokemon above it not quite as uh, malleable. It's got its options it can mix and match, but for the most part, a simple and effective Pokemon that fits on certain specific team styles and it has its advantages. Now begins the C rank. We have at the top Flygon coming in at number 19. C rank is where we're going to start to see those OU ranked Pokemon that aren't quite central auto include Pokemon that fit on multiple styles that you see constantly. They're slightly more fringe, but they are fantastic at what they do in their own right. Flygon is a perfect example. Flygon is an alternative rock resist to Swampert. It has the advantage of a unique dragon ground typing, which provides neutrality to grass, unlike Swampert. So the typical HP grass laws won't work against Flygon teams. And most notably, it has Levitate, making it immune to spikes and ground type attacks. Because of Levitate, Flygon is a staple and a pretty much a must have on the Superman archetype, an archetype where you aim to use at least four spike immune Pokemon and ignore enemy spikes as much as you possibly can. The issue with Flygon is that it gets pretty destroyed by both Skarmory and Gengar. Swampert can at least hit Skarmory with a stab boosted Hydro Pump, same with Gengar. You can just do huge damage to Gengar with that on Swamp, but Flygon, however, is doing very little to both Skarmory and Gengar, and they can take advantage of you massively. You can run Fire Blast on Flygon to hit Skarmory, but it doesn't hit very hard, to be honest. Flygon's special attack is measly. It's non-stab. But on Superman teams, being weak to Skarmory isn't that big of a deal, because Skarmory stacking spikes doesn't matter to you. Your goal is to ignore spikes, so then making spikes is not that impactful. And with support from stuff like Pursuit Tyranitar to eliminate that pesky Gengar or other stuff that can check Gengar, Flygon can be one of those amazing defensive Pokemon that is just insanely hard to pin down and actually KO. It can spread Toxic, it is an amazing check to those Rock types, Tyranitar, Aero, it can help you out versus Gyarados, Salamence, fellows like that. It's a good Pokemon on the right team, but not quite as easy to fit as Swampert or Metagross are. At number 20, we have Charizard, one of the best mixed attackers in Gen 3 OU. Charizard has that coveted base 100 speed tier, stab fire moves. You can simply run HP Grass for that perfect fire grass coverage. It has the substitute plus focus punch combo to pressure Blissey and Tyranitar. It also has beat up as another way to pressure Blissey. I love Charizard, I think it's fantastic. Unlike many of the Pokemon in this C rank, it is actually quite self-sufficient. Problem is, it doesn't quite fit on that many team styles, especially more defensive-leaning teams or something like physical offense. You can't just chuck a Charizard on there. Specifically, it's good on Spikes teams or Spikeless offense teams like Mixed Offense. While Charizard has a lot of advantages, it suffers a bit from a lack of firepower compared to Moltres. Moltres hits a lot harder, and Moltres can hold its own decently against Blissey. Even though Charizard directly threatens Blissey, Moltres has, you know, it can Toxic Protect against it or Will-O-Wisp Roar, stuff like that. It's got the tools to handle Blissey, and it is more solid and sturdy. Moltres has better natural bulk compared to Charizard, who is comparatively very frail. You can come in against like Metagross Meteor Mesh a couple times, but it hits pretty hard. You don't have the greatest base defense on Earth. Charizard also gets shut down pretty hard by bulky water types like Starmie, Melodic, and Suicune, whereas Moltres at least hits significantly harder with its modest hidden power grass. Charizard's doesn't hit as hard as the Moltres's does, but still a great Pokemon. Probably C rank is about right. It's fringe not used on every team but on the right team it's fantastic number 21 is melodic i think melodic deserves to be a bit higher than this actually melodic is a really great defensive pokemon and a very commonly used pokemon on stall teams with its mono water typing it serves a similar purpose to something like suicune but instead of having that longevity with pressure and carmine to break through it is just more of a solid defensive guy with recover surf and toxic it's a pretty simple pokemon to be honest it also has refresh to be sturdy against status it has some moveset variety too you can run hypnosis for some short-term momentum on it you can run mirror coat to catch something like a zapdos or a gengar off guard that are clicking thunderbolt against you 
An issue Melodic can have is that it is called a hex magnet, some people call it, because it often has to recover loop and it's vulnerable to sanded spikes. So something like a rock slide flinch with its 30% chance, if you recover loop enough, you're eventually going to hit that chance. Same with critical hits often hit Melodic just because it has to recover repeatedly. It's incredibly passive and that can be very punishable, but I think it's really solid. This is another one that people find really annoying. It's one of the most hated Pokemon in Gen 3 or you. I don't think it's that bad. You have more than enough tools to pressure Melodic folks. At number 21 is Heracross, which I also might put a bit higher. I would put it higher than actually all three of these. I would put Heracross at the top of C rank. Heracross is an amazing fighting type wall breaker. Stab Megahorn, one of the few high power physical attacks in the game. It has Guts, which is a great offensive ability. You can't defeat this with burn. Status is dangerous to click against it. It's quite fast. It can hit 295 at maximum jolly speed. It does usually runs adamant though. It's fast, but not that fast. It's kind of feels like it was designed to punish stoly teams and be a wall breaker, which it is very effective at. It has a good amount of customization in its move sets. You can go focus punch or directly threaten with brick break, rock slide, hidden power ghost is an option you see sometimes to punish Gengar. You can go earthquake sometimes too, gets earthquake. Heracross is also a staple of weather clear teams because it's set with substitute Salak Berry. Once sand is cleared from the field is an amazing sweeper. Without worrying about that sandstorm chip damage bringing you down, you can sweep the entire world sometimes. Great on rain teams to fill out your physical side. Uh, great on various weather clear strategies. I really respect and enjoy Heracross. Foratress is here at number 23. Always been a weird Pokemon to evaluate for me. It's simultaneously like the best thing of all time and sometimes it's just trash. Hard to pin it down to a number, uh, but Fortress is the most popular alternative spike setter to Skarmory and it has a lot of advantages that set it apart. It has access to rapid spin. Spikes and rapid spin on the same set is fantastic and it kind of defeats enemy Skarmory, especially if they don't have a Gengar because you can just come in and rapid spin against them every time and win the Hazard War very easily. Fortress really sounds amazing but the problem with Fortress is it requires a lot of support and Fortress teams are one of those archetypes that tend to look very similar. You need Pursuit Tyranitar and probably Wish Support and it's probably it's like a more defensive direction for TSS and the game plan is similar every time. You want to eliminate Gengar so that Foratress can win that Hazard War and Skarmory comparatively really provides so much more defensive utility. Even though Foratress has that utility in the form of Rapid Spin and Explosion and it can threaten Rapid Spin as more effectively. It's also not worried about like electric moves. Skarmory can weasel its way out of so many situations thanks to its spike immunity and ground immunity and you really start to appreciate appreciate Skarmory and all of its advantages when you use Foratress. Because of that, Foratress really needs to patch up a lot of uh, things and Foratress teams can be a bit hard to build. Great Pokemon though, good Pokemon to learn the game with, uh, solid, always seen in tournaments here and there. So interesting one to evaluate. I can never quite pin it down, but this is probably about right, somewhere in the C rank. At number 25, we have Breloom, which is a Pokemon I'm also mixed on and find hard to evaluate. Breloom is excellent for its ability to uh, instantly put the enemy to sleep with Spore and then take advantage of that with a big focus punch. It's like an incredible short-term momentum generator and it's commonly used on like mixed offense teams or hyper offense teams that just want to win quickly and Spore just gets you such early value. It's really great on that kind of strategy. In my experience though, it's pretty easy to stop the early momentum that Breloom generates and stabilize. And once you do stabilize, Breloom in the mid game can be a little bit hard to get much out of. It's frail, it's kind of slow. It does have Mark Punch, that helps. But another issue with Breloom is four move slot syndrome. You want Spore, Focus Punch and Brick Break. You kind of want Mark Punch too, but then you just suck completely against Gengar and Salamence. They just eat you alive. You have like nothing to use against them. You you want like Hidden Power Ghost helps versus Gengar, but then doesn't help much against Salamence. Sometimes you can run HP Rock or just bank on Focus Punch chipping them. Stun Spore or Leech Seed you can sometimes use. It always feels like Breloom is limited in some area. It's nice alongside Pursuit Tyranitar, but then that's requiring a bit of support. Compared to Heracross who just has Rock Slide, Heracross is, feels better as a wall breaker to me. 
They have a bit of different roles because Breloom is used more as a momentum generator. Even just clicking Spore and chipping something with Focus Punch once can be enough on Breloom teams if you have that enough uh, aggressive momentum to carry that to victory. But I find Breloom inconsistent. I might even put it lower than this personally. I don't know though. At the same time, like Breloom can be amazing. So Breloom sometimes just carries you single-handedly. Dunno. I'm okay with this placement of Breloom, I will say. Jolteon is here at number 25. This is an interesting one because Jolteon is another Pokemon that seems amazing when you say all its advantages out loud. It has a great special attack. Same speed tier as Aerodactyl, outrunning such important targets as Stami and Gengar and even Doug Trio. Jolteon also has Volt Absorb, an amazing ability, not only providing immunity to electric type of attacks but healing you when you get by electric type attacks. It doesn't include Thunder Wave in Gen 3. Bolt Absorb does not block Thunder Wave but it blocks electric type attacks. Jolteon is great on Spikes teams when you're able to outrun most of the metagame and threaten them with either Thunderbolt Ice or Thunderbolt Grass coverage. Jolteon generates a lot of momentum. Roar is also really nice to uh, have a fringe option against those sub passes, zap doses, agility pass stuff, Swords Dance, Celebi, Carmine pass stuff. Roar is always good to have. Also punishes Blissey coming in to try and wall you. Baton Pass is also great for pivoting, passing on boosts from Celebi and stuff. Problem with Jolteon, it's limited mostly to those more aggressive Spikes teams. Jolteon can help you out by being a bit of a replacement for Blissey because it helps out versus Zapdos, Stami, and Gengar, allowing you to pivot in on Thunderbolt and just directly threaten them because you outrun them. Issue with Jolteon has been the rise of Claydol. Claydol kind of destroys Jolteon. Claydol has a huge amount of special defense. It is immune to Spikes, which is Jolteon's main form of uh, offense of progress. It is immune to electric, of course, and it can shrug off those low power, hidden power grass or ices. And it just KOs you with earthquake too. And you can't come in repeatedly with Jolteon. Jolteon's quite frail. It uh, is vulnerable to spikes chip damage. Jolteon is also prone to the common interaction of simply getting thunder waved by Zapdos. You come in on the thunderbolt, everything seems great. And then they just thunder wave you and now you're totally crippled. So the Jolteon has those shortcomings and it's also limited to basically one archetype, which is hyper aggressive spikes stack teams. There have been fringe uses of Jolteon on like Magneton teams because it supports Gyarados uh, providing electric immunity. The Baton Pass is useful. Wish support is also cool. Jolteon has Wish randomly. Kind of a cool option. Jolteon does have a lot of shortcomings though but on the right team Jolteon can be great. It's just rarely seen these days. Up next is Gyarados, and personally I would put Gyarados above Breloom and Jolteon. I quite like Gyarados. Gyarados is basically an alternative to Dragon Dance Salamence, but it has its unique advantages. With Water Flying Typing, you are crucially neutral to Ice, meaning you can actually come in against Swampert. Unlike Salamence, who is very scared of Swampert. Gyarados also crucially resists Meteor Mash, which helps out massively against Metagross. Gyarados also has access to Thunder Wave, which is a cool little uh, way to cripple stuff coming in, especially common switch-ins like Zapdos, Gengar, Aerodactyl commonly come in against you. Thunder Wave is a great way to cripple those. The issues with Gyarados compared to Salamence though are, first of all, it doesn't have access to Rock Slide. It needs Hidden Power Rock if it wants Rock coverage, and the problem with that is that you also kind of need Hidden Power Flying for Stab, so you have to choose between Rock coverage to hit those crucial flying types like Zapdos or Aerodactyl or Hidden Power Flying to actually hit stuff neutrally for good damage. The most common set just runs Double Edge as its third move. Hidden Power Flying, Earthquake, Double Edge, Dragon Dance, because Double Edge can at least do good damage to stuff like Zapdos. But then you kind of suck versus Aerodactyl, and if you're out of a nature with Gyarados, you actually can't outrun the entire metagame. Salamence can, Gyarados can't. If Gyarados wants to outrun everything, it needs a jolly nature which sacrifices a lot of its attack. So Salamence comparatively in one Dragon Dance has wider coverage thanks to its access to Rock Slide. It also outspeeds more without sacrificing any damage. Gyarados is a bit more limited in that department, but the defensive advantages of Gyarados are very valuable. Gyarados and Salamence work well together because Gyarados helps in the matchup Salamence is uh, bad in. And I think it's a very good Pokemon, to be honest. I think it's quite consistent. You're not going to have too much trouble with a Gyarados team. It's one of the best Swords Dance Celebi recipients. I also love how it lures in certain Pokemon that you can Thunder Wave or chip down, whereas Salamence lures in stuff that is more sturdy against it. But Gyarados uh, is solid against Swampert, and the stuff Gyarados lures in is like Zapdos Gengar, which you can actually take advantage of that very well. 
At number 27 is Hariyama, and controversially, I would put Hariyama above even Breloom. I would shift Hariyama above Breloom, Jolteon, and Gyarados. I think that Hariyama is a better fighting type than Breloom, and I think it's a better Pokemon than many of these. Hariyama is very good. It's a bulky fighting type. It's got guts similar to Heracross. It's slower, but it's a more defensively oriented fighting type. It has fantastic breaking power, defensive value. It can fit on a few different team styles, usually more defensively leaning teams or like para spam teams but those team styles are very good and consistent they're great you see them all the time in top level play Hariyama has been on the rise massively. I talked about this not only in a dedicated video, but also in my recent iceberg that I think Hariyama deserves to be OU ranked. I personally find it more consistent than Breloom. I would rather use a Hariyama team in a serious tournament or if I'm taking something seriously, I think Hariyama would have a higher chance of success than a Breloom team. Same with Jolteon. I would rather bring a Hariyama team. And down at the bottom of the C rank is Cloyster. This one pains me a little bit. Cloyster was uh, one of my favorite Pokemon when I first started the tier. And a Cloyster Spikes team by UD was the first team that really made this format click for me and understand the power of like spikes and offensive pressure. A Cloyster Moltres Jolteon aggressive spike stacking team. Unfortunately, I feel like Cloyster is really full enough. It is interesting because it, much like Fortress, has a lot of cool advantages. It has spikes, rapid spin, and explosion. And it has a really massive defense stat. It can be one of the few spike setters that isn't scared of Swamp It. It can actually come in and punish Swamp It and use it as a spike setup opportunity because it resists water and ice and it can shrug off Earthquake with its huge defense stat. You can also outrun Tyranitar and directly threaten it with Surf. That's useful. It seems good in almost every way. It just introduces a lot of defensive shortcomings. If you compare it to Skarmory or Foratress, it is really not that defensively solid. It has its advantages here and there, but it suffers massively and you really have to make up for close to shortcomings with the rest of your team or just go all in on offense but it feels like in many situations i would rather run a just a skarmory because of how much it helps in other matchups and even though cloister can't be trapped by magneton skarmory can just accept the mag trap make a spike get thunderbolt and bring in a threat you'd almost rather a skarmory because cloister even though it can't get trapped by mag it just has so many other shortcomings it gets pressured by spikes and sand unlike both foratress and skarmory feels like it dies very quickly it has limited entry points hopefully we'll see a cloister renaissance in the future because i really like the pokemon i think it's a really cool aggressive spiker with the unique ability to punish swamp it but i really haven't had much success with cloister recently i've sort of come to terms with the fact that cloister maybe is not as good as i initially thought so from the s to the c rank is basically standard ou what you will very commonly see in tournaments are the s to c rank fellows but d rank is where the more fringe stuff begins and at the top of d rank is red Jice, who i think probably deserves to be at the top of this tier good pokemon this is one of those pokemon that has kind of come full circle a bit in the early metagame this was popular it was formerly ranked in ou then it started to fall off it was rarely seen actually one of the few pokemon that have dropped to uubl in gen 3 because of its uh waning prevalence in top level play but it had a bit of a resurgence in i think Kalos invitational 6 red Ice was used very frequently people realizing that actually red Ice is quite good and i think red Ice is good it is a interesting mono ice type special wall it's like a really aggressive version of blissey that has a bit more special attacking firepower access to explosion and stab ice beam so it's like a special wall that's really aggressive which on some teams like that is valuable especially when you can cover the fire type matchup with something like a Suicune. that's one of the problems with red ice is that it's weak to fire types so it's not a totally catch-all special wall or something like blissey but on offensive teams red ice can go a long way and really what's beautiful about red ice it's one of the few pokemon that could come in defensively and still maintain offensive pressure for you and on sometimes it's even better than snorlax at that snorlax is similar an offensively oriented special ball with red Jice can threaten skarmory and gengar and it doesn't need support from magneton to function it's pretty self-sufficient in what it can do uh, i can thunder wave stuff too the second big flaw for red Jice is that it has no status immunity like blissey has blissey has natural cure red Jice does not it has clear body which is pretty useless on red Jice. doesn't come up that often but I think it's really good. 
I like red dice. Up next is Smeagol, and if I'm being honest, I feel like you could switch Smeagol and Cloyster. Maybe put Smeagol at the bottom of C rank and Cloyster down here. Smeagol, I just think, is very good. It is the Pokemon that can learn any move in the game, and it turns out that is very useful. It can have Spore and Spikes, notably. Explosion for momentum, various status options, and where Smeagol thrives is as a hyper offensive spike setter. Uh, the ability to sleep one enemy, basically incapacitating them, reducing their what they can do massively, and set spikes on the field, and like Thunder Wave something, or Will O Wisp something, or Explode, is incredible for offensive teams. I actually think that Smeagol is more consistent as an offensive spiker than Cloyster is in the current metagame. And you see Smeagol teams pretty often in high level play. Smeagol can do more than just that though. You can do Dragon Dance Pass with Smeagol and run some aggressive like physical offense type thing. Only Pokemon that gets the combo of Dragon Dance and Baton Pass, which can enable some really cool stuff. That you can run so many different things like Endeavor, Transform Smeagol, the Blue's Energy thing is fun because you can transform against like a Tyranitar and become a Tyranitar randomly. It's a funny thing. Up next, Medicham. I would put Medicham above Regice. I really like Medicham. I think it's a fantastic wall breaker. You see it pretty often in high level play more than on many of these Pokemon in D rank. Awesome Pokemon. Love the mind games it creates love the in particular my favorite thing about metacham is how it enables creative team building you see some really really creative teams built around metacham and what it can enable offensively that's i think the most skillful aspect of using metacham is building around it all its options you can take advantage of i've got a dedicated video about it this is my favorite pokemon in gen 3 OU. i love using it I love building with it. I love watching it. Kingdra is here in the D rank. I also think Kingdra should be above Regice. Kingdra is a fantastic swift swim sweeper, the best one in the game. It is excellent on special offense teams. I guess the downside of Kingdra is that it kind of just fits on that own, only on that style. It is basically just restricted to special offense. But I think Kingdra special offense teams are the best special offense teams because they patch up so many of your issues. The water dragon typing a Kingdra helps out massively in many matchups like against fire types and uh, salamence. Rain dance, letting you outrun entire metagame is also really useful against Aerodactyl fast fellows like Stami Gengar, who you can struggle against with special offense because many of the best special attackers are quite slow. Kingdra patches that up, also enables you to run like Heracross alongside it, which is like a physical sweeper you can use as a backup plan which really improves the consistency of special or like dug tree offense maybe is more appropriate since it's not all in on special attackers if you're running a heracross i really think kingdra is very good and it's one of the most consistent ways to run special offense d rank i would agree with though because only fits on one style not very versatile very one dimensional but does its job very well up next is jinx who personally i would put jinx below all of these I respect what Jinx can enable. It's a fairly fast sleep inflictor with lovely kiss that has great offensive typing, ice psychic, good special stats. So aggressive opener for special offense teams and various different types of like creative hyper offense too. There have been developments with like mean look perish song, Jinx as a blissy lure. I just find it very inconsistent. I think that in the lead matchups, you can just get destroyed by uh, like a Lum Tar or something can just get you immediately. At least you can get the Doug follow up, but I don't love that. I don't love I don't love the Jinx lead. It hinges on the lovely kiss hitting and like getting the right matchups. I don't like that kind of gameplay. That's kind of just match up fishing for a good lead. Uh, Jinx can is one of those Pokemon that in the lead can just win instantly. You just lovely kiss, sub Carmine and just ice beam everything. Kind of a stupid Pokemon, but I find it very inconsistent personally. I do respect what it can enable though. So D rank I would say is appropriate. Up next is Raikou. I would put Raikou way above Jinx. I probably put Raikou below some of these other ones though, maybe further down the bottom. Raikou is interesting. Powerful sounding Pokemon on its own merits. Fantastic stats. It's one of the damn legendary beasts. So great stats. Uh, great natural bulk and sub -car mind. Can be a really good Pokemon on special offense. Good alongside Porygon too. Problem with it. It's weak to Doug Trio, slower, gets trapped. Weak to the majority of Blissey sets that run Seismic Toss because you can't uh, make 101 health subs like Suikun or Jirachi can. Raikou does punish the fringe Blissey sets that don't run Seismic Toss, so that's cool, but you can't always rely on something like that. Raikou is... A lot of people swear by Raikou and say it's underrated and really good. I find it inconsistent. I think it needs too much support. It's weak to both Blissey and Doug, which is rough to be weak to like two of the most common Pokemon ever. For that reason, it needs like Porygon 2 and it needs like Bulky Doug for eliminating Blissey. That is so much support. Up next is Venusaur. I think Venusaur is 
better than Jinx and Raikou and better than many of these. Venusaur is one of the better sleep inflicting Pokemon. I think what makes Venusaur preferable to me over something like Jinx is that even if it misses the sleep, it's at least like fairly naturally bulky. It has good typing. It has good mid game value. You can bring it in as like a Zapdos switch in or a Starmie switch in. It has overgrow Giga Drain, which helps like you commonly get hit into Ice Beam, into overgrow range by Ice Beam and Giga Drain against Starmie. That's a common interaction. It also has Leech Seed, which is a great thing to click after inflicting sleep on someone. It's fast enough that it, it can get 284 max speed. So fast enough to outrun a lot of common leads and just sleep them. And you don't mind just switching out turn one with Venusaur because you can bring it back later. But like a Jinx, if it's in a bad lead, matchup and it switches out when the hell do you get jinx back on the field later it kind of needs to be in a good matchup turn one because if it's not how can you switch in jinx it's ice psychic it has no stats venusaur though can come back in later and do stuff up next is porygon 2 a beautiful pokemon how do you hate porygon 2 i love porygon 2 it's so awesome trace is so cool it copies enemy ability you can trap enemy dug trio copy enemy levitate vault absorb natural cure i love the ability to tr to uh nail down dug tree which enables entire archetypes you can run like raikou as mentioned or you know tar metagross jirachi fellows that hate dug trio porygon 2 enables them so why is it so low it even has recover thunderbolt ice beam all these amazing move pull options i think porygon 2 teams are kind of just a little bit inconsistent even though they're just awesome and really cool they hinge on facing dug trio sometimes a bit worn down by spikes porygon 2 while it's a good catch-all wall isn't quite as sturdy as something like Blissey because it can get worn down by both powerful special attackers like Zapdos, Boltress, Starmie with spikes and sand but also physical attackers it's like a medium wall not quite like an amazing physical wall or special wall in either area you can get worn down by both sides of the attacking spectrum it also feels like Porygon 2 teams can sometimes struggle to fit everything they need so I would agree with a placement something like this it makes sense it's an amazing enabler has a lot of advantages but you rarely do see Porygon 2. Ludicolo is here next. Cool Pokemon, an alternative to Kingdra with its own advantages. Access to Leech Seed is very nice. Grass typing provides ground resistance, which is good. Helps you against Metagross. It's a rain dance Pokemon with a bit more mid game value compared to Kingdra. You can come in defensively, Leech Seed stuff. Helps out versus Blissey to be able to do that and, and such things. I think uh, where it suffers versus Kingdra is simply with its typing which while it has some advantages it sucks to be weak to flying and bug and uh neutral to fire as well whereas kingdra times four resists fire and can reliably help out against moltres and charizard ludicolo cannot and the final pokemon in the d rank is vaporeon something around there is valid i would put vaporeon above jinx and raikou though vaporeon is a cool hyper offensive lead on aggressive teams because it has really cool lead matchups it can handle zapdos because it gets hit into select range it can hit you with two ice beams the select berry baton pass can enable your teammates and keep momentum up sub against blissey is 101 health so you can live seismic toss behind a sub and get some momentum off that basically momentum generating machine really cool pokemon i love its more offensive leaning role in gen 3 actually has value defensively too on certain teams very specific but it has wish pass it's a mono water type it can really help against like suicune in particular has its advantages over melodic and suicune those will be more preferable most of the time but vaporeon you do see occasionally i think vaporeon is awesome but it's limited to very fringe uses as a bulky water type pretty uncommon because of its four move slot syndrome and vulnerability to status the offensive vaporeon said while awesome is kind of if you know how to play against it you can take advantage of it and that team style i think is a bit inconsistent now here we are in the riff raff the e rank the weirdos i gotta say reggie steel at the top of e rank that's way too high i would say mistrevis is better i would say wheezing is better blaziken glalie is better you can fight me on that i'm a glalie supporter reggie steel is a weird one it's pretty good it has like it's a mono steel with amazing defensive stats it's got explosion great move pull i find it difficult to build with though i think the curse sets need a lot of support and they're very fringe very niche uh the more miscellaneous defensive sets are almost always outclassed by metagross like the vast majority of the time occasionally registeel has its advantages on the special side of things compared to metagross more sturdy against like starmie for example but the how when how often does that come up how often do you use registeel for that i feel like i don't know if registeel deserves such a high rank in the e tier because it is almost always outclassed by alternatives in my opinion i don't know perhaps i my registeel respect will improve in the future it's quite good but i think that a lot of these other pokemon have more definitive roles that stand out more to me 
Misdreavus is a good Pokemon. It is an alternative ghost type to Gengar. It is not poison type, meaning it is neutral to psychic, helping out massively versus Claydol. It has access to Mean Look, Perish Song. It's limited though in the fact that its stats are horrendous. It's much more vulnerable to Pursuit Tar than Gengar is. Gengar can weasel its way out of Pursuit Tar in many ways. Misdreavus struggles a bit more there. Misdreavus was a pretty significant development in the Superman archetype, helping out in many ways, with its Mean Look, Perish Trap being pretty nice on that archetype type to eliminate important targets and help out those clay doll too. Ninjask is on here and I almost refuse to give Ninjask the time of day by acknowledging its existence but here we are. Ninjask is cheese Pokemon that can do subpar stuff. If you use sand attack Ninjask I'm just gonna say it I don't I don't appreciate you. Stop doing that that's not fun for anybody that's not epic at all. You're cheating not only me and the player base but what's worse is that you're cheating yourself. I would personally put Ninjask in the P tier which stands for pest. This Pokemon is a pest. Get it out of my sight. Next we have Marowak who unfortunately we have to acknowledge is quite good on speed pass teams. I think that style is quite cheesy. It can be inconsistent in many ways but it, it does exist. You got to be aware of it in some capacity. E-rank sounds about right because that can be game winning but it's also really it's, it's quite fringe and it's also uh, a bit all in and unreliable, so E-Rank sounds about right. Hard to evaluate something like that, of course. Outside of uh, Speed Pass, you can use Marowak on Power Spam teams, it's decent, but I prefer other stuff on Power Spam besides Marowak. I think Rhydon's better, like a sub punch Tyranitar or just other substitute attackers are better than Marowak, probably for Power Spam. Now here's a Pokemon I can respect, Armaldo. This is a cool Pokemon, bug rock typing. It's cool as a Snorlax check. It's one of the few knockoff users. Sand Immune knockoff user is notable. It has Stab, Bug and Rock, which are quite nice uh, offensive types to have. It can pressure Celebi with Bug Stab, which is useful. What makes Armaldo quite solid against Snorlax is it has battle armor, meaning it's immune to crits. So if the game goes really long and you're kind of just sitting there copying its defensive boosts forever, you're never going to get crit and have your defensive boosts ignored, which means Armaldo can sit there forever. You can also knock it off and just pressure it with Seismic Toss or Rock Slide or Rock Blast or whatever you have. E-Rank is about right because Armaldo is incredibly niche. It's not every day you're going to see an Armaldo team, but on the right team, this Pokemon can be good. And I think it's fun. Here we have Weezing and immediately put Weezing above all of this other riffraff. Weezing's at the top here. Weezing is a good Pokemon, folks. This guy has a high defense stat, access to Levitates for that crucial ground immunity, nullifying the poison type's weakness to ground. And it has one of the most beautiful move pools ever. Amazing stats with high defense. Crucial resistance to fighting and immunity to poison, giving it a defensive value. It's got Will-O-Wisp, Fire Blast, Thunder, Explosion. Sludge Bomb for Stab, Taunt, Pain Split. It's a beautiful Pokemon. It's truly magnificent. Hard to fit on teams. I think E-Rank probably about right. You're not going to chuck Weezing on any team, but I love Weezing. It's so cool. Blaziken is on here. Listen, I think Blaziken probably deserves E-Rank. There's been Blaziken slander recently. People making claims that Blaziken is washed up. It's not that epic at all. I made a video claiming that Blaziken was this cool anti-meta pick. And then ever since that video, I think Blaziken has lost every battle it's ever done. I think that a witch casted a nasty spell on Blaziken and cursed it. I don't think it's Blaziken's fault. This guy has firefighting stab. What a beautiful combination. Incredible mixed attacker. Aggressive opener as a lead. Great enabler for offensive strategies. It's got focus punch even to hit switch ins. Thunder punch for waters. I think Blaziken's got great tools. It's awesome. Hard to build with, hard to fit on most teams, but has a lot of advantages. And the slander against Blaziken is the result of some sort of smear campaign or alternatively some sort of wizard's curse. I think we should put Glalie all the way up in the S rank as the best Pokemon in Gen 3 OU. This is a snowball that has a snowball's chance in hell to create three spikes in the lead slot and explode and uh, defeat everybody. I think the fact that Glalie has a niche is one of the coolest things Gen 3 has ever had to offer. Anti-Glalie people that think I overrate Glalie. I think it's good, man. I like it. It's It's got good neutral typing against leads. It's can make spikes. It's got taunt explosion, stab ice beam. I like the guy. He's got value to me. Okay, that's what counts is that I find him valuable. I find him very epic. So keep your Glalie slander away from me basically is what I'm trying to say. Don't say bad things about Glalie. I've used this guy to great success on the ladder. Tournaments, not so much, but ladder. Glalie is a good ladder Pokemon. Up next is Machamp. Pretty cool Pokemon. It's a bulk up sweeper. It's similar to Hariyama. Has very similar options. It's a mono fighting, slower, sort of bulkier fighting type with guts as well. Limited in its options compared to Hariyama. Hariyama has knockoff and... Uh, 
It's got more health. It also has access to thick fat, but Machamp is a bit faster, has a higher defense stat and uh, can outrun Claydol and outrun like Skarmory and do bulk up cross chop and stuff like that. So it can be a better breaker on some more aggressive teams. Hariyama is more a defensive leaning guy, but if you want a bulkier fighting type for a more offensive strategy, Machamp is the one for you. E rank about right because it's fringe, outclassed mostly by other fighting types like Heracross and Hariyama, but it has its place occasionally. Camerupt exists up next is a Camel Caretaker. This is one of the most epic Pokemon ever. Fire Ground, it's just a beautiful Pokemon. Look at it. It's a camel with volcanoes on it. We all love Camerupt. I love the niche that Camerupt provides that Zapdos Gengar switch in. I will say it's uh, quite exploitable, gets dugged easily, doesn't stick around for very long, but you see Camerupt in high level play sometimes. It was in Kallus. Gamers have used it. It's fringe, you're not going to see it often, but I don't even know how to evaluate it. It's kind of so specific that it, it kind of, it probably deserves E rank bottom. That's fair. I would not argue with this too much, but respect Camerupt. It's surprisingly cool and good. And then we have Houndoom at the bottom of E. I probably would put Houndoom above Camerupt and Machamp. If I'm being honest, probably Blaziken and Glalie too, if I'm being honest with myself, because Houndoom uh, has more value in it as a Pursuit Trapper and a counter to Celebi and Jirachi. Like that's really valuable. And you do actually see it quite a bit in high level tournaments. It, it actually has a lot of valuable traits that teams really like to have as a gap filler. It's more of a Pokemon that you uh, use to fill the final puzzle piece of a team in. Like it's not something you build around from the ground up, but rather like the perfect thing to fill the gaps of a team. So for that reason, it's not seen very commonly, but the problems that Houndoom solves are important because th there's really limited options for pursuit trappers in gen 3 the most common is tyranitar but sometimes you don't want to set sand or sometimes you want to use a physical tar set so houndoom is the second best pursuit trapper and it also helps out versus fires like it helps out versus moltres and charizard because of flash fire that's really nice it destroys Jirachi Celebi, Dark Fire, quite good typing. What sucks about it though is that compared to Pursuit Tyranitar, Houndoom can be a bit flimsy at handling Gengar because it's more frail and Gengar can just like two hit it with Thunderbolt on the way in sometimes if spikes are up. That can be rough, but Houndoom deserves better than bottom of E rank. Houndoom's better than that. Now we are in the F rank. I take issue majorly with Regirock in F rank. I gotta say Regirock is better than many of the, the fellows in E rank. Regirock is good, man. I feel like you see it quite often in high level play for a supposedly F rank Pokemon. I really like it as a lead on physical offense. Even if they know exactly what the set is, it's still does its job. It's a really bulky mono rock type. It's got good lead matchups, great move pool. I think it's better than Reggie Steel. Uh, not better than Reg Ice. Reg Ice is the best Reggie, and then Reggie Rock, Reggie Steel. That's my Reggie ranking. If you were curious, I think this is a bit of slander towards Reggie Rock, and Reggie Rock deserves even more respect than this. Steelix, I'm not sure. You don't see Steelix that often. It's a cool Pokemon. It can come in against uh, Zapdos, Jolteon, similar to Camerupt, but unlike Camerupt, it sucks against Gengar, whereas Camerupt defeats Gengar. But Steelix is sturdier, has great defense can kind of be a combination of Camerupt and Metagross, which is useful on some teams. Problem with Steelix, it opens up some defensive shortcomings for teams, like you can suck versus water types, especially Stami can kind of eat you alive. I think Steelix is better than F-Rank, personally. A good Steelix team, I think is better than a good Camerupt team, in my opinion. Lunatone, I don't even think should be ranked. First of all, Soul Rock is nowhere to be found on this list, and I think Soul Rock is better than Lunatone. Soul Rock is the physical leaning one that has uh, explosion and stuff. That's like quite good. Lunatone is like Super Epigamphorus one with this one time, and people think it's real. Don't let Super Epigamphorus trick you, folks. Super Epigamphorus can make like Feebas work somehow, and people will start ranking Feebas on the VR. Let's not kid ourselves. Lunatone has look it. I'll give Lunatone res some respect. It is actually a pretty nice Salamence answer because it's immune to ground, resists HP flying, but then it hinges too much on the hypnosis hitting. It is too frail and it, it compared to better Carmine passes, I I've had zero success with Lunatone. I tried the Lunatone teams. I've tried building with it. I've not had much success at all. Maybe against a team even worse than mine, I can win, but that's saying a lot. I don't respect Lunatone that much. To put it above slacking is insulting. We'll get to that. We'll get to slacking slacking in a moment, but to put Lunatone above slacking is an insult to slacking. Sceptile probably about right. Uh, 
You could probably put it in E rank too, I don't know. Sceptal is, is interesting. It seems really great on the surface. It's really fast. Uh, Mono Grass is nice defensively. Gives you entry points against like Zapdos and stuff. Claydol. It has Pursuit too. It has Leech Seed. I think Sceptal is like pretty good, even underrated perhaps, but also hard to build with and rarely seen. I'm happy with low tier for this. I can get behind that, but I would put it above Lunatone for sure. I think Sceptile's way better than Lunatone. Not even close. Slacking, F rank. I almost think Slacking is should be behind Regirock here. Slacking is quite good. Blue's Energy hit number one on the planet with Slacking, breaking the world record. Blue's Energy is a crazy person as well, but that should say something. If a player can succeed with Slacking to that extent, that's saying something. It's not like Lunatone where it got a one-off victory and a miracle SPL best of one. This is a Pokemon that's had a consistent result in a ladder grind session all the way to rank one. That means it's pretty good, folks. I don't care who you are. Uh, Slacking does have Truant, the worst ability in the game, but it has the stats of a legendary and it can hit harder than almost anything. It's a great wall breaker. It can come out and back in repeatedly and apply pressure. Is sometimes really difficult to switch in against and it punishes defensive teams massively. Good Pokemon, to be honest. By the way, I apologize for slandering Lunatone this much. It, it's, it's a bit rude of me. I apologize to Lunatone. I don't need to keep speaking about you in such a negative manner. You may have unrightfully weaseled your way onto the viability rankings, but uh, honestly, I respect that. You can you can take your trophy for now. By the way, Slacking's sprite here is a Steelix. That's some sort of mistake. Anyway, moving on to Don Fan. Don Fan in the F rank, I think sounds about right. Don Fan is pretty cool. It is a mono ground type with rapid spin on it, solid defensive stats. So it can be an alternative tar check that has rapid spin. Problem with it, similar to Flygon, it gets totally destroyed by Skarmory and Gengar. And unlike Flygon, it doesn't have the benefit of spike immunity to improve its value. So what Donphan needs is basically, you can't run Donphan without Magneton and also Pursuit Tyranitar to eliminate both Skarm and Gengar. And that limits you a lot, but I think Donphan teams are actually quite good. They're just insanely, support reliant basically running a bunch of auto include slots just to allow don fan the ability to exist but on those teams with the support don fan is really cool it's like a it's a tyranitar aero check it's really solid against gyarados which is rare like you can hp rock gyarados swampert can't do that as effectively you can defeat salamence as well so don fan covers a lot of the physical attackers and it can rapid spin at the same time which is a lot of roll compression articuno in the f rank i suppose is fair it has a lot of shortcomings but i would put Articuno Kuno above even maybe even Reggie Rock. Really cool Pokemon on Superman patches up your weakness to offensive swamp, but in particular hits you with Heal Bell, gives you some pressure stalling longevity, helps you in like long games. Come in against a lot of passive fellows and get a free Heal Bell, which is valuable. I think Articuno Superman is my favorite variant of Superman, at least at the moment. You can also use Articuno on like TSS type things because it has Stab Ice Beam and Raw. Just really helps out versus Swampert and Celebi. I think that is very valuable to help on those matchups. Those Pokemon are constantly seen. Good Pokemon, to be honest. I like Articuno. Now, Roselia is here in the F rank. This is interesting because I've sung Roselia's praises in my recent video. Roselia did those legendary CI wins. It's way better than anyone expected, but uh, does it deserve to be on the VR? Good question. I think probably out of respect, you chuck Roselia on the VR. I I'm down with that because it's pretty bad. It has like no stats, but it's got that little combination of utility and typing and spikes and stuff. Aromatherapy leech. Yeah, bottom of F rank is appropriate for Roselia. Congratulations for earning a spot on the VR. I think you were there last year. Were you? Was Roselia on the last one? I can't recall. Is this a first for Roselia? If so, congratulations. If not, congratulations for staying on the damn VR for this long, if, if that's what happened, because you're a little flower and you've managed to make dreams come true. Look at you. How good is this? And finally, at the bottom of F rank, interestingly, is... Umbreon, which seems almost disrespectful, but I can't even deny it that much. Umbreon, yet another one of those Pokemon that seems good in theory, but always seems to suck in practice, and it's hard for me to even explain why. It seems great. It's got Wish Protect Pursuit, good Mono Dark, good neutral typing for a special wall. That's an amazing amount of tools. It's got like a Pursuit user and a Wish special wall in one. That's amazing roll compression, right? But you never see it in high level play. When you do, it seems to lose. I think the big thing is that it kind of sucks at trapping Gengar. Gengar can kind of elude Umbreon, especially in Sandless matchups. You need a bit of special attack investment to actually do enough with Pursuit, but then that sacrifices your bulk. You can get taken advantage of by stuff like Metagross. 
because your move set is like wish protect pursuit toxic so metagross can just come in for free and start mashing which is rough i don't know though there must be like umbreon must have a good team to arise but i say that every time i do a tier list it has not happened yet i think they're chucking it on the vr out of respect because it seems so epic but it's yet to achieve much so we're waiting for you umbreon to show yourself as for now that has not happened and that does it folks the entirety of the adv viability rankings for february 2024 i've given my thoughts on each one do you agree with me disagree with me let me know down below thank you for watching and i'll catch you later